Welcome back to On The Market, the podcast that takes you on an exciting journey through the world of real estate investing. I'm your host, Dave Meyer, and today I'm joined by my brilliant co-hosts, Kathy, James, and Jamil, as we explore the newest tech trends revolutionizing the game. Get ready to level up your investing skills because together we'll uncover cutting edge technology that's reshaping the way we do real estate. Picture this, virtual reality tours that transport you to properties without leaving your home and AI driven algorithms that help you make smarter investing decisions. It is mind blowing stuff, folks. So grab your notepads, buckle up and get ready for a thrilling episode of On the Market with your hosts. Dave, Kathy, James, and Jamil. Together, we'll explore the game-changing technologies that will take your portfolio to new heights. Hey, Dave, my awesome co-host. Your enthusiasm for the tech trends we're discussing today has got me so fired up, too. You know, being a laid-back California investor has its perks. I, I may have a relaxed vibe, but I've also seen how embracing technology can enhance our real estate investing game. From leveraging innovative tools to staying ahead of market trends, it's all about finding that perfect balance. Kathy, my California cool co-host, you know I'm always up for good chat, especially when it <laughs> involves tech trends. <laughs> it sounds just like me, but I must admit, <laughs> but I must admit, I might need some extra help na- navigating the digital landscape. As you know, my yacht is my natural habitat, and technology sometimes feels like uncharted waters for me. But hey, even a successful investor like me can't resist the alluring, cutting edge tools that take our portfolios to new heights. So, Kathy, I'm counting on you to make me afloat in this tech savvy episode. I'll bring yacht jokes, you bring tech expertise, (laughs) and together we'll strike the perfect balance between high seas luxury and and digital wizardry. (laughs) Deal? (laughs) Let's set sail on this adventure, Kathy. James, my yacht-loving friend. Ah, the tech episode. I can already see the waves of confusion crashing over you. But don't worry, buddy. I'm here to navigate these treacherous technological waters with my signature wit and charm. Now... (laughs) I know you're swimming in that sea of wealth, but let's remember to keep our heads above water when it comes to technology, shall we? Who knows? Maybe we'll even teach you a few tech tricks that'll leave you more amazed than finding a hidden treasure chest in your yacht. All right, ladies and gentlemen, before we continue, I want to take a moment to ask you something. Did you notice anything funny about this episode so far? Well, here's the big reveal. The entire introduction you've heard from Kathy's California vibes to James's yacht jokes has been written by none other than our trusty AI assistant. Even the words I am saying right now have been written by AI. That's right. We're just reading the responses generated by ChatGPT, our brilliant AI partner. But fear not. While the intro may have been a fun little detour into the AI realm, we have an amazing human-driven episode about real estate technology coming up after the break. See you on the flip side. So it seems like we have found something we shouldn't be using ChatGPT for, which is writing podcast outlines, as you can all see, but... Thank you three all for indulging me as we tried this. And thank you listeners for listening to that pretty awkward, <laughs> lame script that ChatGPT wrote for us. What'd you guys think of that, that ChatGPT's performance there? Cornball. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I really love the fact that James had a yacht, but let's move on. Clearly, it does not like writing podcast scripts, which I guess is good for us. We'll be, uh, we'll c- keep our jobs. Um, but, There are some really good uses for ChatGPT. And if you're not familiar with ChatGPT, I'm sure everyone has heard of it, but it is a generative AI platform. You can basically type and talk with it. And there are all these incredible use cases for it um, that people are using in real estate and beyond. And so in today's episode, we're going to spend some time talking about how we can use ChatGPT for real estate businesses. And then we're also going to move on to just other technology that each of us use in our real estate businesses to help grow, scale, be more efficient in that. So I'm curious, Kathy, 
Have you used ChatGPT before for real estate? Uh, you know, I was kind of struggling with a job description for our syndication manager, and I, I don't know why. It's just not my strength. So <laughs> Rich just, you know, got on ChatGPT and said, give me – it was really simple. Just said, give me a job description for a syndication manager. And I, I didn't think AI would know what a syndication manager was. But within seconds, I had a full job description that really hit it, like on com completely. I maybe had to add or change a couple of minor things, but that was super accurate. So, uh, you know, I, I would say for more uh, less feeling involved stuff, like a job <laughs> you know, description, AI could be good for that. But if you're, again, trying to have AI write a story, I'm not sure it's there yet. That, that's pretty interesting. So did you did you iterate on it? Like, did you ask chat GPT, get a response and then communicate, like have a conversation with it? Or did you download it and then just like make the changes on your own? Yeah, I just made it on my own. But Rich has been Rich is definitely an early adapter. So he's been playing a lot with it. And part of part of AI is it's, it's machine learning, it's constantly learning and needs f human feedback. So Rich is always <laughs> giving it feedback, like, Oh, I didn't like the way you wrote that. Or, um, you know, this <laughs> was corny or whatever. And it'll it'll come back and, and rewrite it. Yeah, I'll tell you guys some of the things I've done to to use it in a minute outside of real estate, but it is really interesting how it works. Jamil, are you are you using uh, ChatGPT at all? I am actually. So as you know, in wholesale, the name of the game is to have an extreme number of conversations every day, right? You need to be able to do a lot of lead generation. And because my main method of finding deals is communicating with real estate agents, that can become a very voluminous task. So what we've done is we've actually embedded ChatGPT in our outreach software. And because the, you know, texting laws and the way that sort of the, the firewalls work when you're trying to communicate with people through text message, especially real estate agents, uh, a lot of, a lot of words get blocked. A lot of phrases get rejected and the agent will never see your message. And so what we do is we send out an original opener that we would typically say when we're trying to engage a real estate agent in forming a relationship with us or to bring us an opportunity. And then we put it through ChatGPT and have it spin it like 30 times for us. And then that way we've got 30 iterations of this opener message that mm. we are now having conversations with these real estate agents and, you know, and it's been working really well. And so for those people that have nine to five jobs that, you know, don't have time all day to sit around and, and think of the response to talk to somebody, Chad GPT is doing it for them. And they really only have to get on the phone once the agent has an opportunity. And so it's really revolutionized the way that we do our lead generation. And people have no idea they're ma forming a relationship with a robot because, you know, a few conversations later, they're talking to a human. So is it automated or are you, you know, a human is writing the first thing, they put it into chat GPT. And can you just explain, like if our audience, if you haven't used it, can you just explain sort of like what the process is? Yeah. So it, it is a human that is starting the conversation. So we'll put an original opener. Like for me, you know, one of my openers for agents is, do you have anything coming to market in original condition or needing work that I can look at before it's listed? So that that's just, let's just take that opening line. And I write out that opening line and I put it into chat GPT. Well, chat GPT will give me 30 or however many versions I want of that messaging in different words and different phrases and different uh, combinations so that it sounds like me, but different. We have to put it into chat GPT and it'll give us the, you know, the different versions, but then the software we use will take those different versions and then automatedly start having conversations. So it initiates having the conversations. And then when they respond, it initiates a response. Wow. It's incredible. So you've, you've programmed it so that like it is automatically yes. responding to people. Now here's, the, here's the rub, right? So normally we would be paying people $20 an hour to have these conversations to just, just to get it to the point where I can get on the phone and start talking to the agent or, or, you know, a senior acquisition manager can get on the phone and start developing the relationship further. That whole position is gone now. Hmm. That's been completely taken over by chat GPT and the automations. It's incredible. How do you feel about that? I love it. For for me, it, it takes away so much of my overhead and it allows people who, you know, don't really have the time. I mean, I, I've got a ton of mentees that have nine to five jobs. They just don't have the time to sit on the phone all day and talk to real estate agents to help them get a deal so they can quit their job. 
And so, you know, this has become a real incredible tool for them because it's allowing them to do the work while they're working and then they can work on their side hustle when they're on. And it actually can now become a manageable side hustle because they they can do it in a couple hours a day. So, you know, you're from sales. You know, we both have a big background in sales. Like what... How has the response has been, you know, because a lot of that getting that deal is like just saying that magical thing or that it really like separates you, you know, from, you know, whether it's a direct to seller, you're talking to somebody, uh, you're doing things or, or a broker. Like if I'm communicating with somebody and I'm having an authentic conversation with them, you know, I'm going to the deal is probably going to get done a lot better. It, have you noticed any kind of like sure. pushback or because it's just the opening question and then just going to a professional salesperson, it, it doesn't really matter. Yeah, it's all surface level. So as you know, right, with respect to real estate agents, they're very busy people. You can't always get them on the phone. A lot of them don't answer the phone right away. You've got to you've got to engage in some ping pong back and forth bet- before you get the person on the phone. And that ping pong takes a tremendous amount of time, right? The going back and forth takes forever. And so that's what we're eliminating right now. And so that when the professional salesperson is actually taking it one step further, all they're doing is jumping on the phone and furthering the relationship. It is pretty crazy because like even what we just read, right? Like, I mean, I, I'd be afraid that a pirate's going to be talking to a broker now like, oh, hey, <laughs> oh, hey do, do you got any deals on the storm front or something? You know, it's like. <laughs> but, but, but what's interesting, James, is that if you texted somebody in a pirate voice, right, they would be intrigued and say, what, uh, what is happening here? <laughs> Can we please do that? <laughs> See, I would just be like, oh, another weirdo from Seattle <laughs> texting me. <laughs> <laughs> or that's an, another another Californian looking to leave California and come somewhere else in the world, right? That's just a normal day for James as someone talking over to pirate voice <laughs> out of nowhere. Hi. <laughs> well, James, are you using it at all? If you, or you, you sound sort of skeptical. Uh, uh, you know, I'm a very old, I'm like the old man now that's like, oh, I don't know about these new things. It's like when the internet was dialed up. Um, I, I do believe this is going to get a lot better, just like everything. Anytime it comes out, it's going to be refined, and, and and this probably will, like what Jimmo was talking about, take over for a lot of those like VA style jobs, where it's like that basic level entry communication, and then bringing it over to a different sales funnel. Like right now, we for we use VAs and cold callers to get into our office. Then it goes to a professional salesperson, but it gets through those hundred thousand calls before that person has to make that call, and so it can make you more efficient. Um, and so we are starting to play around with it, but you know, I'm just so old school that it, it kind of a freaks me out that I think AI is going to try to take my brain, um, because, cause I'm always worried about that. And then, uh, but you know, we, we've used it a little bit for being efficient on writing, um, like, you know, for example, when we were trying to make like a key glossary term, just for general, like important facts and terms we wanted clients to look at, it was very efficient for us to run it through there, giving definitions of terms. But then the problem I was having is it wasn't putting in my voice and how I would look at that term. And so I ended up rewriting the whole thing. And, and so I think it's really dependent on what you want to do. Kathy used it in a very efficient way. It wrote a good job description. But if you want your voice and your personality and your specialty in the communication, it's never going to get there. I don't know, man. Unless it steals your brain. So don't it's load your videos It's not stealing your brain. They like If you fed a, a machine learning model, like, I don't know, a hundred or a thousand of emails that you've written, it will absolutely sound like you. Yeah. Like chat GPT out of the box solution might not, but if you made a custom model, you could absolutely do that. There are companies now that can literally make it sound like your voice. Like it can fake your voice and make it sound like you're saying things that you're not saying, which is absolutely terrifying. That is terrifying. There's an example of Tony Robbins put all of his materials, everything he's ever said, written, uh, spoke about anything into an AI program to train it how to coach exactly the way he coaches. And, and so I think there is, go, you know, it, it depends on what you put in it. So James, if you were to really work closely, like Rich is trying to do, you know, giving it feedback, training it like it's an employee, uh, you know, absolutely, it would learn. I won't uh, say a name, but I was at a very influential person's office recently, and they have written a new book. This person's a New York Times bestselling author, right? And so they would normally uh, do their own audiobook. However, what they did is they contracted uh, an AI company to do the audiobook recording for them, and it saved them all the brain damage of having to sit through those recording sessions. And I listened to it, and it sounded real. Yeah. Dude, that's crazy. That's insane. Wow. That's cool. I mean, 
it's terrifying, but it, that that is one actually cool application. Are there other chat GPT or similar types of programs that, you know, functions that you would like these types of programs to do for your business that you haven't tried yet? Or have you heard of any other good applications for these types of uh, generative AIs in real estate? I mean, I, I think it could at some point, like, do like a, a surface analysis for you, like on a syndication deal or any kind of larger, you know, like running the, the overall cash flow, like you can give it the core metrics, like the input numbers, and then what the value add is, I could see it make those calculations. And then that would be actually really handy for underwriting. If it can get you through 90% of the underwriting, and then all of a sudden, you just have to fine tune the whole thing. I, that's what I'm hoping it can get to, which I'm sure it will. Um, just to get you through the surface junk to get, you know, grab someone's port, uh, you know, presentation, go through it all, kick out the numbers and get you the key facts that you want to look at. That's what I'm hoping it does because that would make me a lot more efficient to not have to get through 90% of the, of the, of the fluff. That's going to happen soon. I feel like definitely. And just market data too, right? Just knowing what the crime rates are and what the job growth, the wage growth of an area, all the, all the due diligence you do on, on a, on a project, especially if it's not in an area where you live. It takes a lot of time to do that. To, to have an AI do that research would be amazing. Well, I wonder if you could do that now. Have you tried, Kathy? No, but I'm sure you can. I mean, a lot of the data that we want is, behind a paywall with, you know, yeah. expensive companies, right? So it'll be interesting to see if chat GPT can, can give us that or whatever AI uh, that we normally would have to pay for. Although you have to pay for, for the AI as well, usually. So what do you all make of the threat of chat GPT? I mean, I think there's some like existential threat that people are worried about, but more specifically about the economy and the prospect of job loss. Do you think there's a real risk of that? Or is it overblown. I don't necessarily think it's job loss. I think it's job evolution. And I think that the internet did that to uh, us in many ways. The tech, you know, the industrial revolution did that to human beings in many ways. The technological revolution does that to humans in many ways. And this is a part and extension of the technological revolution. And it's just going to evolve the way that we work, right? We are getting more efficient. We are getting more creative day by day. And as AI or machines take away some of the more basic skills, People are going to be pressed to be to tap into what makes us more human. You know, the connection, the capacity to really, uh, you know, be empathetic. It, I think what it's going to do is going to force human beings to lean into the things that make us more human. And we get to remove the things that make us robots. Because let's talk about that, right? In the beginning, when this when the Industrial Revolution happened, we, we became too mechanized, right? This whole the assembly line of of what we've done to people needs to undo itself if we want to be more creative. And I think this is part of that undoing. Oh, I love that perspective. I like that. Yeah, that is a very hopeful outlook. I'm going to remember that one. <laughs> yeah, I mean, just as an example, when, you know, when I was young, the way that a real estate agent operated is they had a book. And that book showed what was for sale, but there was no way for an individual to know if they, unless they just went and drove around and saw for sale sign, they had to go to the real estate agent. So then when and that changed and, you know, things like realtor.com came around or Zillow and you could actually search and find out what's for sale yourself. There was a lot of fear that real estate agents would be put out of business. There was a ton of fear about that. Like if you could find a property, why on earth would you need an agent? But here we are today, you know, 20 years later, 10, whatever it is. And real estate agents haven't even lowered their commission very much. There's a few companies that, you know, that offer that, but most people still just go to a regular real estate agent, even though they found the property themselves, you know, because we do need often that human touch, that like confirmation that you're making the right decision, especially a big one like that. It, it's it's a little surprising, but again, an example of how technology supported an industry and didn't didn't kill it. But of course, it can it can kill an industry too while it's developing a new one like taxis versus uber and it could kill off some of these algorithm companies you know like zillow automatically calculates zestimate right it goes through the algorithm it, it computes the data but it's a little bit broad and it's inaccurate because it's too broad and it doesn't get in key points of selling so if like chat gpt can really re def refine that an uh, analysis it could put companies like that just totally out of business because, you know, if, if you can get the chat GPT to go through a specific property and give it more specific terms of pulling out values and running analysis on it, that would that would really cause some of those other companies to be irrelevant at that point. I think generally speaking, the potential for AI is 
much more economic growth, right? Like I, I get that there is fear that some jobs will go away. And that that is probably true. Like you think about, like Jamil said, the, the industrial revolution. Uh, I was listening to a podcast about this. Like there used to be people who like physically did switchboard operators um, and like connected people to the phone. Like that job completely went away. Um, but if you think about GDP, like the, the measurement of the economy, there's not that many variables. It's basically the number of people who are working and how productive they are. And if this tool makes you more productive, which it, it like inevitably will just make the average person more productive, regardless of their job, like that to me seems like an enormous opportunity for economic growth, especially at a time where we're in a country, we're in a in an economic climate right now, where 15 months into a tightening cycle, we're supposed to have this job loss recession. There's still 10.5 million open jobs in the country right now. Clearly, we don't have enough people to do all the jobs, even during this like adverse economic conditions we're in. So in my mind, if this helps reduce the the number of sort of like rote tasks that people have to do so that the people who are working in our economy can focus on more high skill kind of jobs. That just seems like a huge benefit to me. All right, let's 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 move on uh, from just chat GPT and AI. I want to talk about other types of technology that you all are using for your businesses. James, I'm, I am, I have to admit, I am skeptical to call on you here, here because I think <laughs> we are losing credibility as an entire podcast by even having you on this show <laughs> talking about technology. That's the nicest wow. thing you've ever said to me, Dave. <laughs> if you're all listening, we always just give James a hard time for his technology because Every time we record, like his 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 computer or his microphone or his camera is broken, like every single time. So we all just give him a lot of shit about not knowing how to use technology. But James, obviously, you run a very successful and sophisticated business. So are there any types of technology that you're using for your real estate business that you recommend or think people should consider? We definitely use tech. Um, luckily, I have a good staff that can operate it a lot better than I can. <laughs> but uh uh, you know, we, we're kind of an old school business, uh, CRMs, email databases. Uh, we use Salesforce for a lot of our communication through all of our internal companies. And, and the cool thing about Salesforce, well, the, the cool thing about Salesforce is it can connect all of our people in our offices. We have almost 80 people at our office between six different companies. And it allows us to, you know, to track properties, clients, projects and they all speak to each other and we have automations that automatically go through each process right it can be from underwriting a deal and finding it going through our underwriting process then it goes into the loan approval then it goes into our sale process transaction team property uh increase and then on to dispo so it, it does allow 80 people in our office to go through very systematically um and it keeps one central hub for us um, from that, though, we also use things like Follow Up Boss and other CRMs just for ease of uh, like, you know, salespeople have to be organized no matter what, because as salespeople, we can get lost in the leads. And so, you know, any kind of basic CRM we use just to keep our salespeople focused with a purpose every day, what they're supposed to be targeting. And then for property, uh, you know, for properties improvement, we use simple programs. It's not too complicated, like Monday.com, where it's a public storage. We can put things on it. Uh, everybody can communicate off uh, Central Hub, uh, and it just gives a central place for people to track a project for our project management. But we're, we're, we're pretty old school and basic. Um, outside those core things. But, you know, we still believe in people. People get things done. And, you know, as long as we, so we use tech more for a central hub for communicating. Yeah. So if everyone doesn't know monday.com, it's similar to like Airtable. There's a bunch of other tools out there. They're basically project management tools. I personally love them. I think they're extremely useful. For like a small investor, would you recommend these tools? Or like if you were just trying to buy one or two properties, maybe a year, or maybe just trying to get your first deal, would you use the same technology or do you think it's unnecessary? Um, I wouldn't use Salesforce unless you're a pretty, you know, honestly, it's so expensive to maintain because it's such a robust piece of, it's a really cool platform for databasing, but it is robust, gets complicated. So you have to bring in tech to fix it or, or design it. So it's expensive. So I would not recommend it for any of your small businesses. Honestly, we're probably too small to be using it, but we just went down this road 10 years ago and we've spent so much money building it out. We're already in it. Dude, that's Salesforce entire business model. They get, it's so complicated that you can never leave that. Uh, we can't. 
everything is tied into it. It's and it's a little bit clunky, but it does work, and you can do whatever you want with it. But then when you have someone this tech challenge like me, I don't even understand what it can do. I'm like, well, I don't know. Does it have my documents? <laughs> but for smaller investors, Monday.com is great, right? It's a central hub. You can communicate on it. Keeps all your storage in there. It's very affordable. Um, you know, it, it keeps records of everything is great for property management. There's so much tech out there that you can use that is not expensive and simple. Follow up boss is a fraction of the cost of sale of Salesforce and my salespeople love it. It's simple. They have their buckets. They can go through. They can do the recorded calls. What does it do? It's a CRM for we use it for off market and then our and our uh, investor leads. So it just it's uh, it allows you to sort your lead flow, classify them. You can set up drip follow up campaigns behind it with texting and calling. It's a ve- and it's a very simple program. And for salespeople, simple's good. They want to get through their leads. They don't want to be going through and clicking a hundred buttons to update a record at that point. They want to get on to the next call, and that also makes them a efficient. But there is so much software out there that you can utilize that's not very expensive. And every investor, no matter what, should be using central hubs for sales, uh, whether it's renovating properties for property uh, project management. If you're doing loans, a central hub for all your you know, how you're storing your documents, your procedures. Um, and there's so many things out there. Just explore and figure out what works well for you because it just – it really – depends on how you work as a person. And then there's going to be something for it that's as simple or complex as you want. Kathy, what do you use in your business? Well, first, I just want to say that I think James just redeemed himself. I want to give him a big he applause. Did. He there. did. Yeah. He showed that we give him too hard of a time. <laughs> yeah. I knew he had some technology behind the scenes. All right. Well, um, I mean, I couldn't agree more. A central hub is central to a business where everybody can go find the documents they need, find discussions that have been had. You know, communication is everything within a company and so easy to to have fall apart as the company gets bigger. Uh, so we use... Uh, we've all for many since the beginning used Infusionsoft, which is now Keep to to track all the members of Real Wealth to track all the conversations that any investment counselors had, so that if there's a new investment counselor, they they can just take it from there. They they see the history. Uh, we know everything that they've been interested in. If they I, this might be creepy to people, but like if they showed interest in in a property in Cincinnati, then we know that that's tagged. We make sure that they get information on that area and that they're not getting information on things that they're not interested in. So uh, there was a pretty cool stat that I was looking at before the show, and it said that 70, 77% of the world already uses AI, <laughs> you know, so we shouldn't be too freaked out about it. We've been using it for a long time. We just maybe haven't called it that. Uh, but definitely our system is we've trained it to to work for us to know what we want and need um, when when really following our clients and what they want and making sure that they're only getting what they want and nothing else. And then from there, we use Basecamp, which is project management for planning events or uh, vetting different teams or w- whatever we're doing so that everybody has access to, again, the the procedures, the processes, and um, the, the work that's being done internally. And then uh, to just run meetings, one of the biggest problems companies have is meetings can be really useless. There's too many of them, and often there's a loud loud mouth, <laughs> I'll say, somebody uh, who talks too much and will just derail the, the meeting. So we use 90.io. It's kind of based on the EOS system to keep meetings really, really efficient. Uh, it will have all the to-dos that people said they were going to do. So you go through that to make sure nothing just kind of got lost in the ethers. If somebody said last week they were going to do something, it shows up on that meeting to see if they did. And if they didn't, then it drops down to issues and it's discussed. But uh, so all issues are held in there and there's a time limit per issue and and the team decides which ones are going to discuss so one person doesn't again derail the meeting and think that their issue is the most important and, and you know maybe nobody in that meeting is involved with that issue right so uh so the 90.io has been extremely helpful in managing those meetings and we do them efficiently and only once a week nice when, when james and 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 kathy and jamil if you use these projects too um, when you talk about sort of project management, you're talking sort of about a bigger business. But what about for, you know, finding deals or contractors? Like, can you use these tools 
for sort of like the nuts and bolts, even if you have a small portfolio? For me, I, I'm training new potential wholesalers that, that have never even done their first deal, right? I, I, thousands of them across the country. And so they don't have big budgets and they need to be able to use technology to to create exactly what you just said, you know, get an opportunity or get a deal. Uh, you know, real quick, I have a, I have a student who is 15 years old in high school and, and he wanted to wholesale houses. And the uh, problem was, is that he's in class all day long. So he actually developed a software that is what I was talking about earlier that uses chat GPT and, and does automated lead generation so that he could communicate with real estate agents while he was in math class. And, <laughs> What ends up happening is he starts generating so many leads that he gets to a point where he's, you know, closing four or five deals a month and, and like making literally the entire yearly salary of this teacher in, in a month. Right. And so I actually bought into that software with him and, and now I'm his business partner because I, I seen the use of it and, and it's very inexpensive for somebody if they're just getting started. Wow, that's awesome! Back in my day, we had to just cut class if we wanted to make money. Well, it's school. it's funny. He 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 has to get permission to go to the bathroom so that he can hide in a stall and have a conversation with a real estate agent about a house. Like I didn't do stuff like that in high school, but that's what that's that's what these ambitious ones are doing today. All right. Well, thank you all for sharing this information about how you are using technology in your business. I think generally speaking, people think real estate is pretty slow adopter of technology. I guess that is kind of true. But I, as as you can see, um, there are really good ways to be using tech, technology, different software programs to be helping your business. And I think we're probably just at the precipice now and ChatGPT and more of these AI tools are going to further help you streamline your deals. I'm sure it's going to help find deals eventually, find markets, all that kind of stuff. So it's definitely something I will be keeping an eye on, and I'm sure you all will too. I was going to say, I, I attend a conference called IMN, and it's a single-family rental conference with a lot of big hedge funds. Uh, they started the conference when they when they started buying single-family homes in 2012, 2013, back then. And there was a lot of, obviously, headline news. Oh, no, Wall Street's coming into the landlord business, the mom and pop business. They're going to take it over. And, and, you know, there's always fear in headlines, right? Um, here we are, fast forward 10 years, and, and they own 2 to 3% of the rental properties out there. So certainly not a takeover. But what they did do is bring a lot of Wall Street money into creating new systems for managing portfolios. Um, you know, like things like Appfolio, that, that, that didn't exist when I started buying rental properties. You, you had mom and pop property managers who were usually real estate agents who on the side would rent, you know, would manage your rentals, you know, if you were buying out of state. And generally they were awful at it because they didn't have systems. You, you had no idea what was going on and you just fire them and hire a new one and same issues. Property management is still not easy, but the systems have completely evolved in just the past 10 years with Wall Street coming in. So I say that just to, to, I, I know there's a lot of fear, again, about Wall Street buying up single-family homes. So far, that hasn't happened. But what they have brought is some really cool technology with their with their deep pockets that have helped property managers tap into systems, again, where the, the landlord can just go into a portal and see what's going on with their property. So all I see is the next 10 years being really exciting, just an increase in technology that supports our life to be able to be more human, like Jamil said. I loved that. I think it was Jamil that said that. There were years that people were working like ro robots and still are in some cases. So if a, ro a real robot can do that, what can that human do that a robot can't? So I agree. I think there's going to be, there's a lot to look forward to. There will be new jobs created and we just got to stay on top of it. All right. I love that. I, I, I generally think that that's so true that like people have a lot of fear about technology, but it is a tool to make you better. So like rather than think like, oh, it's going to replace me as a property manager or replace me as an agent, just, just concentrate on how it can help you as an agent or a property manager or as an investor. Because so many of these tools are designed to do just that, to make you more efficient and to make you better at the things that you're already doing. All right. Well, thank you all so much for joining us. Thank you all for listening. We hope that you have a wonderful 4th of July holiday. We'll see you guys on Friday for our next episode of On the Market. Everything's broken. My light broke today. My camera now <laughs> broke. Yesterday, my headphones broke. I'm not the right person to be uh, moderating this technology <laughs> conversation. <laughs>
On the Market is created by me, Dave Meyer, and Kaylin Bennett. Produced by Kaylin Bennett. Editing by Joel Esparza and Onyx Media. Research by Pooja Jindal. Copywriting by Nate Weintraub. And a very special thanks to the entire Bigger Pockets team. The content on the show On the Market are opinions only. All listeners should independently verify data points, opinions, and investment strategies.